Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. So in this video I have another Burger Plus knife that I recently got and uh, I did prepare a uh, little bit in advance for this upcoming, uh, let's say, unboxing. You can probably did see uh, the previous model of this knife that were released in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, this will be the Automat Kalashnikov 1.1 in the 2.0 uh, version. So the model number is 01KAL0105N. These are made in Taiwan. Designed in Germany, yes, of course. It is a Dietmar Paul design. And I must say, I am really thankful that Burger Plus did not give us another huge large box with expensive uh, pouches so on just a standard I would say nicely designed almost look like a you know what <laughs> and uh, yeah we really need nothing more and this harkens back to also uh, let me show you since I have here on the table the packaging from the manufacturer Zollingen, so this is the top tier, the higher end knives that they produce, like uh, this Barlow here. And they only come in this just standard box with a small cloth pouch. And yeah. So when, but uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about this one. One thing that I have mentioned at the start of the video and that I'm uh, really disappointed, and I must say it because uh, I'm uh, I will give you always my uh, uh, my honest opinions. Uh, the previous uh, version of this knife came also with a small tool, just because they kept the same pivot screw and the same fastening of the glass breaker, and there is no tool inside. I did check out, did take it out, nothing, nowhere. So you will have a hard time to disassemble this. But uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Burker.de has on the website for I don't know how much money they you can order the tool itself But now uh, let's talk about the knife. So obviously uh, this is the new version of the one of the first uh, Knife that came in this uh, long line of automatic knives. The first one is uh, a manual one <laughs> Even on the blade says automatic Kalashnikov, it, it has nothing to do uh, with the with the firearm and uh, is designed by Dietmar Paul. You know him as owner and designer of uh, knives for Paul Force. So one of uh, the nicest uh, large, heavy, overbuilt tactical knives uh, he made uh, for Icorn. And then obviously for uh, Burker. So let me give you the specifications really quickly. Uh, they uh, they are almost the same like the previous uh, model, but uh, to be consistent, consistent since this is a newer design, let's go through them. So we have a overall length of 25 centimeters. This is 9.8 inches. The blade length is 10.3 centimeters or 4 inches. The blade width is 3.2 centimeters or 1.26 inches. The blade thickness is 4 millimeters, uh, that is 0 0.16 inches. And the start of the blade and come tapers down to 1.1 millimeter, this is 0 0.04 inches. So really nice, fine uh, tip right there. Uh, the hand length is, are 14 centimeters or 5.5 inches long. With a thickness of 1.5 centimeters, that is 0 0.6 inches um, without measuring the pocket clip, of course. Currently, there is only one version available, and it is uh, the full black one. So, hardware, liners, and also the blade are coated with uh, some kind of, uh, probably some kind, some kind of surface uh, uh, paint. On the blade, we have uh, D2. This is a significant upgrade from the 440C. That we had on the previous version. 
they will be individually numbered so mine is uh, 0 and 111 very nice number right there okay so now let, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the handle scales so I did find on the website directly from Berker, also on Blade HQ, and all, also on some uh, sites that uh, the scales are aluminium. But in my opinion, as far as I could inspect the knife, these are injection molded uh, Zytel or, or GRN if you prefer, so glass reinforced nylon, and there we have stainless steel underneath. So it will be it, it will be not practical to make a cast aluminium scales and then put a uh, full stainless steel liner inside just because of uh, the time that would have uh, be used up on making those molded plastic is faster cheaper and i would say uh, much uh, durable than your uh, aluminium because all nicks and things about uh, usual then on uh, life's knife uh, uh, life of the knife it will be scratched up and it will not look that good. So in my opinion, I would say uh, these are uh, plastic. And then of course we have the deep carry pocket clip. This is really nicely engineered in which you can uh, reverse it. But since you don't have the tool, you can. Unfortunately, I'm still using this uh, small, I don't know if it's T6, uh, Torx screws, I would definitely love to see a T8, nowadays there should be no problem. As far as uh, pivot profile goes, or pivot assembly, uh, we have um, brass liners, uh, sorry, brass uh, washers, so no uh, bearings right there. Since this is a heavy duty uh, technical field knife, I would uh, say it is okay because less uh, dirt and a, a less way how to uh, clog the action. Like the previous version, we have the same linear construction. It is nice and smooth. It will open via the flipper or we have also a nice thumb disk like on the previous one. Okay, now, uh, what, uh, what we have here. So I forgot to mention that uh, the weight is 202.8 grams, that is 7.1 ounce. So for such a, a large knife, that's definitely a decent weight. One thing that I have to uh, put out there is why they did not skeletonize the scales. I would say probably maybe to keep the cost down will be the, the logical assumption. But I would love to uh, have it skeletonized to to give uh, to be maybe under seven ounces. Okay, so now let's talk about the differences. So here is the old venerable AK one hundred and one. And if you would ask me uh, which one do you like more, I must say the original one, of course, just because. Uh, those little things that have changed. Firstly, if you can see, they changed the nice recurve blade to a straight blade. They have a same uh, drop point profile that is really nice. We have a partial switch on the original one, on the old one, and a almost full switch on the new one. And one design feature that uh, is also a functional feature is the is the thumb ramp. So for some reason they uh, did not uh, use it on the new one. So this is uh, a really nice spot where you can put your finger and now it is completely secure and you can do all your thrust and cut motions without any problems. This one, the jimping is uh, a little bit more pronounced but almost always just a little bit because uh, since these are injection molded uh, scales this is plastic this is smooth also on this one but then of course you have the blade portion with uh, which did grab a little bit uh, better your uh, finger meat right there so 
I know why they went with this one, but they went. Uh, one more thing that the, the diameter of the hole on the flipper, as you can see there, is uh, wider on the new one and smaller on the original one. They are just cosmetic uh, differences. The glass blade here looks the same. Also, the lanyard hole looks the same. The pocket clip looks the same, just is uh, blacked out because of the full stealth or ninja <laughs> version of this variant. And yes, back in the days there also was a full body version uh, with the original one, but it has a had a partial um, uh, serrated um, blade on them. So, okay, so those are the differences. I cannot find uh, anything else. So. Maybe you would say there are just cosmetic reasons. Yes, of course, but uh, it gave the knife such a beautiful, uh, beautiful profile. As you can see right here. This now looks just your standard, standard tool. But this one had the little bit, uh, like I mentioned on my previous videos, a little bit that uh, Emerson Commander uh, vibe. It. so here is the and as you can see the super commander is a little bit smaller than the AK 101 and also I forgot to mention in the video about them that yes there is also a UBR or uber commander which is even larger than, than this one with a 10 inch uh, overall length so it is 0 0.2 inches uh, larger than the AK 101 Okay, so now uh, let's see the sharpness out of the box. Yeah, decently sharp, very, very nicely sharpened. You could probably use a little bit of stropping to, to give it that hair popping uh, sharpness to it, but definitely really nice sharp out of the box. Now let's see the pocket profile and uh, let me tell you that this one does carry really well. It has that uh, deep carry uh, pocket clip. It will almost completely submerge or, or uh, hide your knife. Only the peak of the glass breaker uh, peeks out in the pocket. And since the injection molded plastic handles are smooth, this will not shred your pocket whatsoever. As far as action goes, uh, this is definitely better, or should I say smoother than uh, than the original one was. I don't know if they polished uh, uh, the washers, but I have not used any kind of uh, lube on this one, so yeah. So, nice. Okay, now let's see some size comparisons. Uh, so I brought out from my display uh, cabinet one of the 74s that I have here yeah. actually fun fact this is a 74 that I modified because uh, for some kind of reasons this was a uh, 42 conform law from Germany uh, modified knife so it had no spring it was no automatic and you had to depress the, uh, the button and then open it two-handed I just milled out the channel inside that was pre almost uh, pre-molded uh, because these are these are aluminium scales, molded aluminium scales. I just milled out the pocket for one uh, Protec TR4 uh, coil springs that I have and made a nice auto out of it. So this is the 74 and you have uh, lots of different versions of the 74 if you would like to have some compact maybe a little bit larger there is also a smaller one you can choose whatever you like these are really decent uh, push button automatics then let's continue here's the strider smf here's the recon one i highly recommend if you don't have the money or the time or the or 
anything whatsoever to get the MSN and then the Recon one is a really excellent knife that could potentially have the same applications as a Emers Commander. Another large knife. This is the uh, the Carnifex one, Flave Comas, uh, large stainless steel uh, knives that he designed for CRKT. A little bit smaller, but also really nicely high recommended is the Canonian Designs Kershaw Blur. Let's continue. Here is the full size Grapillion from Benchmade Paramilitary 2. Unfortunately, I don't have, still don't have a Paramilitary. I sold it a long time ago, but the Paramilitary, sorry, the Military 2 is right on the horizon. Uh, they should be uh, out soon. So, yeah, maybe I will get one of those. This was the Paramilitary 2. Red Model 1, here is the 940 from Benchmade, Seven Ten, one of my favorite technical, large technical knives that uh, Benchmade for some reason uh, discontinued, uh, here is another great knife, the Spyderco Endura. And of course, I have to put in the frame also Spyderco Resilience, which if you have around $70 and want a really sturdy, large knife, uh, great cutting performance, then check out this one. There is also a lightweight version, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, let's check it out. Beautiful. Okay, let's do some more tactical knives. I know some of you would like to see more, so uh, if I can, I will oblige and show them. So here is the TR4, one of my um, all-time favorite uh, side opening automatics from Protec, just because of the sheer powerful uh, presentation or that this knife has. I strongly recommend it. There is also a smaller version and also a manual version if you can't have an automatic one. And just for fun, Let's see a Recon 1 XL. So if uh, even the, uh, that Emerson Uber Commander is small for you and AK-101 is small for you, then check out this beast. Yes, this is a knife. <laughs> okay. Now let's go down a little bit with the sizes. So here is the QSP Penguin. CVV Elementum, Bug Out, Small Grifilian from Benchmade. Oh, let's see, I have here the CVV uh, This is the Beglighter 2. And I know. Seven forty from Benchmate. Is this seven forty? Yeah, seven forty. Let's do also the peanut. It's just for fun, of course, and let's close it down with the cable dojo folding hunter. Okay, no, now uh, let's talk a little bit about pricing. I mentioned in the start that I'm really glad that uh, Burkert did use uh, all the money on the product itself and not on the packaging, not on the fancy uh, Velcro uh, pouches and nylon pouches uh, and so on. But uh, still, the MSRP is a little bit on the higher end for this one since it is uh, $139.95. That is. Uh, 
USA pricing, uh, and these uh, usually will go for around uh, $121. Since this is a uh, Burger Plus, so knife uh, is made in Taiwan and is distributed uh, by a German company, my friends here in Europe uh, will have a better pricing this time around, so uh, I'm glad, uh, glad to inform you that uh, directly from burker.de website uh, you can uh, get it right now for uh, 99.95 and if you are uh, like me and search for the best price I can point you directly to the uh, Couturali Tourangelle or CT uh, for short which is a French based uh, dealer or knife uh, uh, retailer and they have it for 83 euros so definitely a, a nice uh, uh, price difference. So just uh, compare it with the original pricing which was for the original one in the US uh, Yeah, uh, there is a really high Premium tag to it maybe because of the inflation maybe because of the import charge rig and fees that uh, they have to pay uh, Usually they will cost around 65 to 85 dollars. Yes, it is what it is check with your uh, favorite uh, uh, knife retailer Maybe they give you, can give you a discount or later on they will be discounted by itself. With that being said, wish you a wonderful day. Uh, if you have any questions, please do comment down below. I'm more than happy to reply as soon as I can, of course. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Big thumbs up to you. And if you are not a subscriber, then please consider subscribing. Do not miss any future videos. With that being said, wish you a wonderful day. Hope to see you soon. Bye.